An Iranian nuclear facility became the first known target of the world's newest superweapon last year. One that exploded on the scene not with a bang, but a keystroke. Stuxnet, the first computer worm powerful enough to physically damage a nuclear centrifuge and clever enough to cover its tracks in the process, ushered in a new age of cyber war. But now that the code has leaked in the open, and the New York Times reporting the U.S. was involved in its creation, American officials, security experts, and cyber warriors alike are asking the same question. What if someone lets loose a Stuxnet on us, a boomerang? Joining me now is Liam Merku, one of the first North American experts to discover the Stuxnet virus. And Liam, give us a sense of what it really does. Yes, Stuxnet is uh, targeting a uranium enrichment facility in Iran, and it's trying to disrupt how the machinery at that facility works. Uh, so as you said, it is very targeted, and it is uh, targeted at somewhere in Iran. And it's, in fact, from our research, we found that it's targeting a uranium enrichment facility and it's the first time we've ever seen a threat that can change how machinery works. So it's very innovative and uh, it's a real change in the threat landscape from that point of view. Now it's designed to pinpoint a particular kind of machinery made by one company, but is there a danger it could spread or in fact did it spread? The way Stuxnet works is that it just crawls through uh, your network and it infects as many computers as it can and it looks for a specific configuration. And that specific configuration can only be found in a uranium enrichment facility. Uh, from the point of view of could Stuxnet infect computers outside of Iran, uh, we have seen that it infects computers outside of Iran, it infects computers all over the world, but it will only cause sabotage and it will only cause damage to machinery when it finds a specific configuration that it will only find in Iran. Uh, a Stuxnet variant or a new version of Stuxnet could be used against any target in the world, but it wouldn't be a simple or trivial task to create a new version of Stuxnet. Obviously, Liam, the uh, U.S., if it was behind it, didn't want this known, that they were uh, putting the Stuxnet out. How did you discover uh, the code and track it down? Uh, the code was uh, discovered in July of last year, 2010, and it was discovered because it was using a vulnerability that ne had never been seen before. Uh, so once we saw that the, a new vulnerability was being used, we started to analyze it more carefully. And when we started to analyze it more carefully, we immediately noticed that this was not your ordinary normal threat, that this was something different. And very shortly after we started to analyze it, we realized that it, the goal of Stuxnet was industrial sabotage. And that was really when we started to pay more attention to it. So this really is a cyber attack. Uh, the New York Times reporting the U.S. did it with the help from the Israelis. Does that seem accurate to you? We did a very thorough analysis of the code here at Semantic and we didn't find anything in the code that would indicate who's behind it. So the reports of who's behind it have been looking at uh, other evidence that has been gathered from uh, other parts, not from the code itself. Um, when we looked at the code, we couldn't find anything in there at all to indicate exactly who was behind it. All we could find was that it was definitely targeting computers in Iran. The, most, uh, the highest infections are in Iran and that the virus started in Iran and spread outwards from there. But there's no evidence in the code to point to any particular party who wrote it. All right, Liam Merku, thank you very much. Joining me now to discuss the implications of all this is ABC News consultant Richard Clark, a former White House official, security official, who wrote the book Cyber War, a real expert on this. And Dick, what do you make of Stuxnet and the possibility that someone will turn it against us? Well, Brian, it's a very, very sophisticated weapon. It's the most sophisticated attack weapon we've ever seen in cyberspace. And it wasn't supposed to get out. It was supposed to be covert. I think that's pretty clear. I think whoever did it, whether it was the United States or someone else, they didn't want the Iranians to know what was happening. They didn't want it to be discovered. And they certainly didn't want it to escape and run around cyberspace in half a dozen countries on tens of thousands of computers. It's designed to tell computers what to do when those computers are instructing machines. So a factory, a pipeline, a refinery, uh, even an assembly line for cars, anything like that where there is a command and control system telling machines what to do. This is a weapon that can destroy those networks or can cause the machines to malfunction. Well, Dick, you've been in the middle of government discussions about things like this. Don't you think this was thought through? Did someone say, what if they get it and turn it against us? 
Oh, I think so. And I think uh, speaking to the experts I know who have gone through the tens of thousands of lines of code, they say this is a very strange weapon because it seems to have been designed in part by a committee of lawyers. <laughs> uh, it seems to have been designed to limit collateral damage, to prevent it from escaping. The, those things that were built in for that purpose uh, didn't work. And so now, what do you think is the prospect here? Is there a way to shut it down to get the genie back in the bottle? Well, there's a way to shut down the, the existing worm that's out there, certainly. Uh, the vulnerabilities, the four hitherto unknown vulnerabilities that it uses to attack and to get into a network, those vulnerabilities have now been publicly uh, announced. Uh, Microsoft, Siemens, others have put out fixes, so-called patches, to the software. So the techniques used by the Stuxnet weapon should not be usable again, those specific techniques. But you can take those out, Brian, and put in other so-called zero-day attacks. A zero-day attack is one that's never been seen before. Uh, and they're generated pretty often. Uh, and you've got a new weapon. Richard Clark, thank you very much. You can read more about this story, including an analysis by Richard Clark, by visiting abcnews.com. Just click on the blotter. And for breaking news coverage and the latest on our investigations, follow me and the ABC News investigative team on Facebook and Twitter.